All right. So first, thank you, everyone, for sticking around. I know it's been a, a long and exciting day, and especially thanks to the Department of Transportation and NBR for this financial support. So this project is joint with the excellent Connor Lennon and Josh Madsen. They're both in the chat and happy to answer questions you have as we go along. Uh, so while none of us work for the Fed, we've collected data from about 40 states and they require us to make different disclosures. So let me just say, no state is responsible for anything you see and you can't sue anyone based on anything you're seeing. And I'll uh, save the rest for later. Uh, but all right, so this starts with the motivation that traffic crashes are a huge problem in the US. About 43,000 Americans died in 2022. In part to respond to this, automobile manufacturers have been developing and introducing a suite of new technologies that are designed to make driving both safer and easier and includes a variety of things. Just a few examples. So one class of technologies are collision warning systems. So this is like blind spot warning or forward collision warning. Another set of systems is designed to intervene uh, to prevent a collision. So the biggest example of that is automatic emergency braking. Another set of technologies is designed to make driving a little easier or simpler, and that an example of that is lane keeping assistance. These technologies are you know, very common on new cars, and our estimates are about 12% of the US fleet now has some sort of driver assistance technology on it. Despite the increasing prevalence of this technology, traffic fatalities have continued to climb since a low in about 2007. Now, of course, some of this is COVID, right? Like I don't wanna claim you know, this is uh, due to this technology or anything like that, but it's just that you would hope the, the line would be going down. And so our question is, what are the safety impacts of these new technologies? And, you know, can we do like a cost benefit analysis and see, you know, if they're helping or how do they help relative to their cost? And we would, of course, hope they help. Any safety technology should be fit for purpose and should be effective and reduce collisions. But there are some reasons we might expect that they don't actually help. Uh, so the classic is the Peltzman effect. So this is risk compensation. So does this new technology in your car cause you to feel safer? And as a result, you drive less carefully. Uh, so I just started a new job at University of Alabama, had to finally buy a car to commute to work. And the salesman you know, was happy to demonstrate how I did not have to put my hands on the wheel while driving. Uh, so you know, it's in the sales pitch of like, look how easy this is. Uh, perhaps another reason these technologies might hurt is that at the extreme, they take control of your car. And so at times, can this aggressive intervention actually cause drivers to maybe overreact, or overcorrect, and maybe that itself would cause crashes. Our very preliminary results, uh, what we have so far, is that these driver assistance technologies reduce total crashes, but we're actually finding so far that they increase fatal crashes. Now, we recognize that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and you know one of the things we hope to get out of today is you know a list of ideas of ways to kind of test this result uh, to make sure it's really robust. The way we want to measure this, so how do we want to measure this? So the first kind of natural thing you might do is say, well, let's look at crash rates of vehicles with and without driver assistance technology. And the, kind, the problem with doing that is that there's likely unobserved factors between either the types of people buying those cars or how much they drive them. So you might imagine that drivers who really care about safety are going to also be people who drive buy cars with this tech. So maybe it has a lower crash rate just because of a different kind of driver. The way you wanna try to get at this is by instead of measuring differences in crash risk between cars with and without, let's look at how that crash risk responds to changes in exogenous crash risk. So we're gonna focus on two risk shift, three risk shifters, rain, daylight savings time, and building off of Josh and my earlier work, fatality messages on digital message signs. So today we're gonna to only show you results for rain. That's all we've been able to get to so far. Our, so our design, as I kind of hinted at, is gonna be a difference in differences design, where our main outcome is we're gonna take the number of crashes that take place within 20 kilometers of a weather station each hour, and we're gonna count up how many crashes did at least one car in that crash have driver assistance technology, and how many crashes that happened had no driver assistance technology. And our first difference then is we're going to say, hey, let's look for a car with tech. What is the difference between crash counts during hours with and without rain? And then let's compare that across vehicles with tech and without tech. So how do they both, do they both go up 
do the ones with tech go up by less? So looking at that in the specification, so we're going to be doing log plus one. We're exploring different alternatives to that now. You know, our main treatment effect is what is that difference in how vehicles with driver assistance technology respond to rain? And we're going to use an extensive set of fixed effects to try to make that a comparison. So we're saying, hey, let's look you know, by that weather station in Dallas, uh, Tuesday at two o'clock in July, let's compare you know, those Tuesdays at two o'clock in July with rain and without rain. So trying to hold as much constant as we possibly can. Uh, doing this, anytime you do different diff, you're making a, a parallel trend assumption. What does that parallel trend assumption look like for us? Well, there's kind of two parts. The first is that the crash risk exposure or vehicles miles traveled is changing in the same amount for cars with or without driver assistance technology. So if rain causes people to drive less, well, that amount you drive less has to be the same for both types of vehicles. The other is an assumption about the drivers of these cars, which is saying, so we're okay with having them have different fundamental levels of crash risk, but the way those drivers crash risk respond to rain must be the same. Right, so they were picking up a treatment effect of the technology and not of the driver. So to do this, we've collected a, a ton of data. Honestly, you know, the last 18 months or so, I've been working on pulling this data together. Uh, the first and easy source of data was we could get data from NHTSA's FARS on all fatal crashes in the US. And then we've been reaching out to every single state trying to get data on all of their crashes. Uh, we've been able to get data from about 40 states only 21 of them had the data we needed to do this study. We hope to use it in other papers. Uh, as a fun anecdote, you know, the state of Indiana wanted $800,000 to provide the data we wanted. And while the DOT funding has been very generous, it didn't quite cover that $800,000 uh, request for payment for data from Indiana. Uh, so NHTSA also provides great data on what safety features cars have. Now, for the technologies we're interested in, that data only starts in 2017. And so we have a group of undergraduates working on hand collecting this data from manufacturers' websites to get those vehicles that had it before then. We get weather data from NOAA's integrated service database. So let's just start with the simple kind of summary statistics, like no fanciness, just like the most simple diff and diff design using summary stats. So what we have is a table, Column one, no rain, column two, rain, and then we're gonna look at rows, cars with tech, without tech, and tech. And what this number here says is it says, if you look the for uh, hours with no rain, there's a crash that involves only cars with no tech. There's about 0.3 crashes involving cars that have no technology each hour. That increases to about 0.4 crashes per hour when it's raining. So that's an increase of about 30%. Now let's look at car or crashes involving at least one car with driver assistance technology. There's about 0.03 crashes per hour, which also increases to about 0.4. Notice that's an increase of about 26%. It goes up by more for cars with no tech. So we interpret that as saying, hey, this technology is reducing the probability of a crash by about 3.4 percentage points. So now we look at fatal crashes. We're gonna do the exact same thing. So we have no rain, rain, no tech, tech. So we look and in our data, each hour where there's not rain, there's about 0 0.001 crashes, fatal crashes where no cars have driver technology. That number actually declines when it's raining. Uh, this is was a surprise to us. We've spent most of the past two weeks trying to double check that I hadn't coded something wrong. Uh, you know, it's well known that rain causes more crashes. We're finding fewer fatal crashes when it rains. Uh, that is a decrease of about 14%. Now, when we look at crashes involving cars with driver assistance technology, there's essentially no change. And that is, so cars without the tech, there's fewer fatal crashes involving them. With tech, there's no change. So this implies this driver assistance technology is causing more crashes, though I know this is only statistically significant at the 10% level when we're doing just a univariate comparison. So now let's go to the, the, the full regressions. Oh, sorry, just to say, using the FARS data, you get similar results, slightly different numbers, but kind of the story is the same. So our first specification, we're going to add in this very detailed fixed effect structure, holiday fixed effects. And we just look at how does the effect of rain 
on crashes change with when you consider vehicles with tech. So rain increases crashes overall, but if you look at vehicles with tech, that actually is going down. The thing you might wonder is, well, how much rain? Like, does it matter if it's just a little rain or a lot of rain? So far, we've only split it in one way, where we separate out trace rain or less than a millimeter from anything more than that. That's in column two. And what we're finding is, again, vehicles with tech see their crash rate go down relative to vehicles without tech. Uh, and that effect is bigger in heavy rain, which, which, which makes sense. Switching to the multi, uh, to fatalities, we're going to now find it, so find an increase. So again, we have state data, fires data. Column one is our simple specification that just has any rain at all as our treatment dummy. Then we can allow that effective rain to differ by whether it's trace rain or less than a millimeter or heavy rain. And here again, we find an increase. That is, if you look at the crash rate of vehicles with the tech. That seems that goes up relative to the crash rate of vehicles without the tech. You can look at trace rain and you find still a positive effect and one that's larger when it's more than trace rain. Looking at the FARS data, we find very similar results. So we have a lot more coming. This is just a start of looking at this. Uh, we want to extend it to additional exogenous risk shifters, ones where we think people's behavior might is more likely to be fully exogenous to that. Uh, event shifting the risk so that's daylight savings time and also fatality messages uh, while looking into why we find fatalities going down when it rains we were able to find some probably better weather data we can include so we want to update to do that we're in process of collecting this data on which vehicles better detailed data on which vehicles have this driver assistance technology you know one of our leading concerns is just is this a new car versus old car thing or is it a cars with driver assistance technology so we can look before these technologies existed and test do new cars have that same kind of effect and also look at whether you know how much of that increase in fatalities might be it's helping drivers but hurting pedestrians so what do we do today so i should start it off with just the motivation that traffic crashes are a serious problem that driver assistance technology should be helping with we find mixed results that while they're reducing total crashes, they're increasing fatal crashes. Look forward to your comments. Thank you.